guys, welcome back to my channel, this here corner of the internet. I think it must have been like a week ago, Emmy posted a video about her zero waste essentials that she regretted. And I actually, I'm sorry, Emmy, have not watched the video yet, but I will link it down below just in case anybody's curious to go check it out. But I received a lot of questions from people asking me to do my own version of the video. So I figured that's what we would do today because there are definitely a bunch of zero waste swaps and essentials and things that I purchased that I 100% wish that I didn't. And obviously the whole point of this channel is so that you guys can be conscious consumers and vote with your dollar and make purchasing decisions that are meaningful for you guys and have an impact in your life, like smart purchasing decisions, rather than just seeing something on a Pinterest post or a blog or a YouTube video or an Instagram post and feeling like you need to own that thing so that you can make a difference in this world because that's definitely not the case. I'm just gonna jut in here and say that I actually didn't buy that many things when I first went zero waste mostly because I was cheap but also because I kind of have a minimalist approach to my lifestyle so I didn't go out and buy a bunch of random things and I think that that really helped save me a lot of money and a lot of space and clutter at the same time so ultimately that's what I recommend I just sort of waited until I needed things and then proceeded with caution and I highly recommend doing that and also keep in mind that what works for me might not work for you, so all of this is just sort of relative to my own preferences and my own lifestyle. Okay. I feel like zero waste living has this branding of it being like really exclusive and like you needing all these tools and gadgets, but I really do not think that's the case. I think it's actually just about being smart and being intentional with your life and your needs and the things that you have in your life. So I don't know how this worked out so perfectly, but I was taking notes and I have five different essentials that I purchased that I regret. And I actually have five different essentials that I absolutely love and swear by and would 100% recommend to people. So I thought I would share both of those at the same time. And then I also have four different lifestyle swaps and transitions that I made in my own life that I absolutely love and swear by and would never go back to using the wasteful alternative method of living. So I thought I would share those with you guys too and yeah, let's jump into the video. My first major regret that I have was my travel cutlery and I actually think that me buying it is on YouTube within the first week of me going zero waste. I made like a vlog that week so if you go back two years you might find that video. I was out and about, I did need cutlery so I bought a set but I bought a really expensive set and I actually ended up losing it a couple months later and I realized in that time that I really just don't need any fancy like travel cutlery when I can just bring a fork from my kitchen. Realistically, forks aren't that heavy, they aren't that big and bulky, so if you just take one from your drawers, it tends to work out pretty well. And I've also realized that most of the time when I am eating out or on the go and I need to have some sort of cutlery that's like not mine from at home, it's when I'm at my office and they have like a full set of cutlery there. So just in my personal life, I haven't really needed it. I know that some people do feel the need to have it because they tend to eat out on the go a lot. I just don't, so hasn't really been an issue for me. So I would just say before you go out and buy a set, look at your lifestyle habits and like how often you're using plastic cutlery and if it's often, then maybe a set is good for you and if it's not, then you probably don't need it. My first essential that I absolutely love, honestly, I'm not even going to depth about this because you guys know what it is. It's my Hydro Flask. I love my Hydro Flask. I use it every day. Apparently I'm even known for using it at this point. When Shelby was here, she received a lot of comments from people saying that they wanted a video with my Hydro Flask, so. Apparently I'm known as the internet white Hydro Flask girl. And you know what? I don't hate that because I love my Hydro Flask. It's my best friend. I love it very much. I bring it with me everywhere. I used it this morning actually. I think for me though, buying a travel mug was so impactful because obviously I could have gotten one second hand, but for me, it was really hard for me to overcome like whatever branding is on travel to go cups. There's just something that to me, it used to feel so nice to hold that or like so, it was like a symbol of being a successful adult to be walking around with like a Starbucks cup or some to go travel coffee cup. So for me, it took finding a cup that I really, really loved and wanted to use so that I would not be tempted to like go buy a to-go travel cup, which sounds so stupid to me now, but at the time it was important. <laughs> okay, my second regret is uh, something that funnily enough I used to sell 
bamboo straws. So yeah, this just got really weird. I actually didn't own any before I started to sell them. They were just like something that I was really curious about buying. And so I was like, why don't I just sell them as merch? So that's what I did. But at the end of the day, I actually love using my metal straws way more than I love using my bamboo straws because the bamboo ones you have to keep really clean and theoretically they don't last a lifetime. You can't, so when the wood goes bad, you're gonna have to buy another set. And the metal straws that I've literally owned for years and years and years before I went zero waste, I just find are more convenient, they're more durable. I I only have to buy one set for the rest of my life and so I recommend those a lot more than I recommend bamboo ones. I'm not saying bamboo ones are bad, it just kind of depends on your personal preference, I guess. However, with my metal straws, as much as I love them, I do only really use the like medium width ones. You can get different width sizes, so you can get like ones that fit a bubble tea, you can get ones that are kind of thin and then in the middle there's one that's like a little bit thicker, like a smoothie style straw, and that's what I usually use my straws for. So I don't really use the thin ones very often. I definitely recommend getting like the middle sized width, I guess. <laughs> I just find they're more useful because you can drink things that are a little bit more thick, like smoothies through them, because if it's thin, you can't really do that, you know? Science, science. My next regret is buying mason jars. I think that it's totally overrated. You don't have to go out and buy all these like really cute jars. Just reuse what you have, all the containers, all of the, the jars of things that you're using up and also upcycle them, thrift them. At least where I live, it's so easy to find jars in thrift stores. So that's my next love is I love every single one of the secondhand jars that I've bought. Last time I bought some at Goodwill, I think they were like 20 cents each, which is crazy. Value Village, they were more expensive, but Goodwill, they're super cheap. And obviously glass is really easy to clean. So I think swapping out the need to buy them new and bringing in the ability to secondhand thrift or upcycle some jars that you already have, or even just plastic containers, you know? I have two different plastic containers that came from some sauerkraut that my mom had bought, and I still use them to this day to store like different trinkets and stuff in my cupboards and they work just fine and I didn't have to send them to landfill and I didn't have to go out and buy something new to do the job. My next regret is my hanky. I have a couple of hand-me-down hankies that were actually from my grandfather but I did go out and buy like a really cute one from a local artisan and honestly I never use them. I'm somebody who has a constant runny nose. It's actually ridiculous how runny my nose is like it's it's absurd. It's been an issue my whole life. My dentist is pretty sure I have a deviated septum I don't know, I haven't really looked into it much, but it's been an issue my whole life. Honestly, I never have my hanky on me, which is definitely my fault. But whenever I need a Kleenex, I usually just end up using toilet paper. It's definitely a habit that I'd like to jump onto, but it's just not one that I have right now. My next essential that I've absolutely loved, and honestly, I don't think I could have survived a low waste lifestyle without them, are my produce bags. I love my produce bags, I use them all the time. I probably have like 10 of them now. The ones that I own, I just bought individually. They were like 99 cents at a Whole Foods that was by me in, when I lived in New York, but I haven't seen them at any Whole Foods since, but I have seen them at other like food stores kind of similar to Whole Foods. But I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend getting organic cotton produce bags. They're washable, they're great, you can put whatever in them. Even if you don't have access to bulk, you can still use them to put produce in them. <laughs> I use them for everything. I use them for things that I have access to bulk in, like oats and beans and grains and nutritional yeast and all that stuff. But I also use them for produce, like getting my tomatoes and my apples and whatever else I'm getting from the grocery store. My last regret are my cotton rounds. I bought reusable cotton rounds twice. I have two different sets of them and for the first year I was actually using them, but it wasn't until I posted a video not that long ago where I was using the cotton rounds and somebody commented on it being like, why can't you just use your regular face towel? And I was like, you sir or ma'am or whomever, you're right. I don't know why it didn't really dawn on me that I could have just taken a simple face towel and like cut it up into squares and use those as cotton rounds. So I started just using the corner of my face cloth when I was washing my face at night as the little thing that I would put like my toner on and stuff with. And ever since then, that's what I've been doing. My set of cotton rounds have actually been dirty for the last like four months. I haven't even washed them. I didn't even bring them to my new apartment because I just don't use them. Could have just used a face cloth. Again, I feel like that's something that's really individual for your needs and like what your skincare routine is. So maybe you do need something that like is the equivalent of a cotton round, but you could theoretically just cut up a face cloth into squares and use that. Or even just make your own out of some fabric that you have lying around, that works too. My last love that I absolutely recommend is grocery bags. I feel like this is kind of a given though. It's kind of hard to do any sort of zero waste lifestyle without 
bags of some sort. I didn't really go out and buy any, I just used what I had lying around. I feel like over the years, no matter what charity or like event you go to in life, there's always freebie bags and I had a bunch of those just lying around in my garage, so that's kind of what I use. But if you do need to buy new ones, I love like the cotton durable tote bags. And I also have a burlap bag that I love. I tend to gravitate to using those more. But yeah, reusable bags, bring them everywhere for all of my shopping, whether it's thrifting or groceries or running errands. They great for avoiding plastic bags. And then I have four different zero waste like lifestyle swaps that I've made, different things that I've incorporated into my lifestyle that I would never go back to using their wasteful versions. And for me, that's I've really loved all of my makeup swaps that I've made so far, like all of my more sustainable swaps. Obviously, in my makeup video, I did show you guys that I'm not perfect, like there is still some waste there, but it's definitely a lot less than I used to create. And I do think that that is making a difference, especially compounded over the number of times that I'm gonna purchase things. And of course, I'm always looking for more solutions to make my makeup routine better and better and better. Yeah, I really didn't think that I was gonna swap my makeup routine over, but when I did, I loved every single piece that I found. Shampoo bars. I will never go back to using liquid shampoo. It took me a while to find a shampoo bar that really worked for me, but it just doesn't make sense. Why would I have this giant bottle that goes through so quickly because there's so much water in there when I can buy one bar that's super tiny, easy to transport and travel with, and lasts me the equivalent of three bottles of shampoo. I just don't understand why I would ever go back to using a regular liquid shampoo. It did definitely take me time to find one that worked for my hair type and for all that stuff. And it definitely took me a while to figure out how to use it properly, but once I did, it was Honestly, the most incredible transition, the most incredible thing, and I was definitely not expecting that either. I also wanna say, I don't know if everyone's hair type will work with a shampoo bar. I can really only speak from my own experience, but I do have faith that if you keep exploring and trying new ones out there, that you might find one that works for you. So not saying that it'll work for everyone, but with everything in life, I just am a strong believer in, if you don't give up, if you keep trying, you might find a solution that works for you. Yeah. Also the conditioner I've been using, which if you watch my hair care routine video, I love that. It's honestly one of the most amazing conditioners I've ever used. And it's a bar, and it's wonderful, and it comes without plastic, and I like it. While we're on the train of talking about hair, I also love the DIY wave gel spray thing that I've made. I still haven't run out of my old bottle of gel, which I used to make it, but it's taken me forever to get through that one bottle of gel, so I think that even if this is like a transition that I make for the rest of my life, I don't have to continue to go out and buy like entire spray bottles of wave spray stuff. I can just make my own with one bottle of gel. And at the rate I'm going at it right now, that one bottle of gel will probably last me like six years or so. Maybe that's exaggerating a little bit, but that's what it feels like as of right now. And I feel like that makes a huge difference because that's six years worth of plastic spray bottles that I had to go out and buy every two months or so with my old gel. And then my last swap has just been thrifting and buying things secondhand. I never ever in my wildest dreams, if you asked me a couple years ago, if you thought that I would ever be somebody who was into thrifting and buying things secondhand, I would have definitely answered no. There was no way it grossed me out. I was a germaphobe. I liked staying on trend. There was no way I could find trendy clothes secondhand. I was so against it and I can't believe I ever thought that way because Finding things secondhand is so wonderful. This entire apartment is secondhand. Everything I'm wearing right now is secondhand. It's wonderful. Again, took me a while to like navigate the ropes with it, but once I did figure out how to do it, I would never go back to shopping full price retail ever again, which is obviously unethical and unsustainable at the same time too. Like why would I ever, why, why, I don't know. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful. I hope it opened your eyes a little bit more to different transitions that you can make in your life and made you a little bit more aware that it's not as scary as it might seem to make zero waste and low waste sustainable transitions in your life. As always, don't forget that all of my social media is linked in the description box below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I will talk to you guys in the next video or in the next podcast or wherever you may find me. And as always, remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate. And I love you guys so, so much. Bye.